All right, everyone. I have here one of my favorite all-time cars. This is a 1999 Cadillac Seville STS. That's my favorite model out of the Seville line. And this particular one is so nice. It's actually got, as you can see, come in here, very low mileage, 117, 284 miles. Uh, I have driven this car almost 250 miles, and I gotta say, I love this thing. Um, there's no check engine lights on, there's, uh, as far as I know, everything I've been able to discover in this car works exactly as it should, and it's got a ton of equipment too, I might add. So, yeah, this is just a super nice car. Now, I will say this, this car, if you let it idle for a really long time, okay, or if you're stuck in traffic for a long time or anything like that, the temperature does seem to spike up, okay? Now, I don't know why it's doing that, but like I said, I've driven this on the highway a lot and it stays nice and cool. I've never had the car actually overheat on me, but I do feel it necessary to let you guys know that. All right, let's do the some, a lot of the power equipment. We'll start with the windows. Oh, that's the wrong switch. Right rear, up, down. Just the passenger side window, auto down works, and up. Come on around, come to here. That's down, up. And of course, the all important driver's window down and up. It's got electronic climate control, which works exactly as it should, and the air conditioner is ice cold in this baby. Let's see, turn this on. Let's see if we can find it. I should have done this before. All right, there you see the radio does work. Now, as far as the CD player or the cassette deck, I don't know. And I believe, if we open this up, yeah, there's a six disc CD changer as well. I don't know about that, but I, again, I'd like to you know point out what I do now. It does have the home link transmitter, as you can see. It's got the automatic day-night mirror with the compass right there. As you can see, that works exactly as it should. It's got cruise control. It's got the uh, radio controls on the steering wheel. It's got the climate control controls. I mean, geez, this thing is just, it's an amazing car. It's got the information center. You know, what you go through tells you how much gas you use, your miles per gallon. I mean, I'm just sitting here and it's getting 17 miles at a gallon. I don't get that, but uh all of that stuff oh the one thing i did other thing i did notice is sometimes the um gas gauge as you can see right now it's reading exactly accurate a little over a quarter uh of a tank but sometimes that does go um i, I don't know why but it, do it, do it doesn't always read accurately that's a typical gm thing by the way just so you know it's got telescopic and tilt wheel as you can see, uh, the horn works as it should. Wipers, no problem. Uh, let's see, let's check our mirrors. Left mirror, no problem. Down, up, all that stuff. Right mirror, that's the most important one, of course. Works exactly as it should. Um, you know, it's got the memory seat, power seats. It's got, you know, the act off of, actually, I do have the keyless remote. I only have one of them, but this car does have remote keyless entry that is keyed into the memory. So if you have the car set up for yourself in certain seat positions and whatnot, you click on your uh, transmitter, boom, it sets everything up the way you like it. Your radio stations, your seat, everything. Uh, and if, let's say you have your wife or significant other, um, you can give them a remote and they can set everything up for them. So there'll be no battling over, you know, switching everything back and forth. It's got Twilight Sentinel. It's got factory fog lights. It's got remote gas and trunk release. I mean, this thing, oh, traction control. Uh, it's it just, it's amazing. It's got, I mean, for the year and everything like that, this car has pretty much everything you could possibly, you know, come up with. All right, here's your driver's. Oh, and the shape, it's in unbelievable shape. Inside and out, I might add, as far as you would think this car is only a couple years old. Here's your power seat, as good as this thing is. I mean, it really is a truly amazing vehicle. Let me move this out of the way and show you. Yeah, there's your carpeted floor mat. You know, obviously the factory Cadillac mat with that. I mean, this is just something else, this car. All right, let's go over. We'll start, like I always do, we'll start with the tires. Beautiful, clean chrome wheels on this thing. Chrome clad, actually the chrome slash aluminum. All right, let's check out this front tire, see what kind of tread we got on this baby. All right, we got just about 
six, yeah, 630 seconds. So typical passenger car tires have 1230 seconds. So that's about half the tread is left. So that's good. You don't have to get tires on this thing. All right, rear tire. Let's see. And that one is about 930 seconds, which is typical. Your drive wheels typically have a little less tread than uh, the rear ones. What I would recommend you do though, is you rotate the tires. Put the rear ones on the front. That's what I would do anyway. All right, and let's check this side. This is your right rear. Oops, I hit it, bumped it on my way out and upset the reading. Right, let's get this out. Yep, and that one's right there about eight, nine, yeah, about eight or nine, 30 seconds. Right front. And let's see what we got there. Probably gonna be the same as the other side. Yeah, right there, 6.30 seconds. Okay, so as you can see, you no know, tires are consistent. Now, let's do the body. Right front, it's got this, this is actually was a cost option uh, extra, this paint. I don't know whether they call it pearl white or they got some stupid name for it. But anyway, it's just like a very nice metallic-y, um, it's not like bright white. And this one has a custom painted, uh, hand painted pinstripe on it. And you can see the body is in very, very good condition. Let's open up this side. Of course, you have the power seat on this side. This seat looks almost brand new on this car. Ridiculously nice. And there you go. There's your headliner. And you can see how clean and beautiful this car is. Okay. Now we'll do the door frame. Door jam, excuse me. There you go, and now we'll do the door frame. And of course, the most important part is right down here. That's where you would expect if there's gonna be any corrosion, it would start there, but this car is just remarkably clean as far as anything, scratches, rust, dents. I mean, the car is just terrific. Here's your roof, sorry about the little dew from this morning on there, but again, paint's clean, shiny. The metallic really shines through. All right, the back seat, wow, I, I mean, literally, I don't know if anybody's ever sat in this thing. It's even got the rear climate control there for the rear seat passengers. Here's your door jam. Perfectly beautiful clean. Door frame. I absolutely adore these cars. There you go. All right, right rear quarter panel, no nicks, no dings, and no scratches. I do see a little lump right there. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but nothing. I, I mean, to step back and look at this car, you'd never know there was anything wrong with it. As you can see, the rear bumper is even in fantastic shape. It's got the dual exhaust, as you can see. All right, we'll take a look underneath. All right, and of course it's got, it's typical Cadillac, has a huge trunk. You can fit at least one, maybe even two relatively big sized bodies in there. And it's got the pass through for long objects. And of course it's got your little cargo nets and everything. Now we'll close this. All right, it, as I said, it's the STS. It's got the 32 valve North Star set up in it. Sorry about the dirt on here. Again, trunk, no nicks, no dings, no scratches. Same thing with the left rear quarter panel, beautiful condition. Go down the roof on this side. See, no problem. Door jam. And of course the door frame itself. that driver's door no nicks no dings no scratches there we go you know it's a funny thing I spend less time myself looking at these cars when I buy them than I do when I do the video you're actually looking closer at this car on this video than I do when I go to buy the darn things. I know it sounds kind of stupid, but when you look at 100 cars a week, you know, you kind of have to move it along a little bit or take forever. So this is definitely the longest I've ever actually looked at this vehicle. All right, coming around the front, I see a little scrape on the front bumper there. 
actually it looks like about the only thing on this vehicle is the bumper's got a couple cracks and chips. So if you wanted to make this car perfect, you would just have to get the uh, front bumper refinished. That would be it. Everything else seems perfectly okay. All right, coming along, we'll look down below at factory fog lights. And of course, see if we can get a view underneath. And like, as always, any vehicle, part and soul of the machine right here. I got to tell you guys something. This car is a rocket ship. This thing flies. And what's really neat for a big bodied sedan like this is, front wheel drive, it actually handles pretty decently. Um, yeah, you know, it's not a sports car, but you know what, for what it is, yeah, this thing moves and handles really well. That's one of the reasons why I prefer the STS over the SLS. Because it gives you a little bit of both, a little bit of um, a lot of comfort and a little bit of performance. So it's really it's a nice little mix. All right, let's rev her up for you. Now, obviously, you don't need to be a mechanic to know that sounded great. There's no high rev knocks, no valve train noise. This car is quiet as possibly can be. Just a great running car. And of course, even the underhood light works. How about that? All right, we'll close her up. You know, a couple minor stone chips here and there, but overall, not bad. But what a terrific looking car. Let me back away. Now, I'll, I'll show you guys when I get out in the sun. Um, I will show you guys this again so you can get a little better look at it and, you know, really be able to appreciate it. But like I said, what a, what a car. What a car. And this doesn't really mean much now because it is August, but. You have till the end of the month if you live in Jersey before you even have to get it inspected. All right, now let's do the important thing and we'll take it for a ride. All righty, now's the fun part. We're going to take it for a ride and you'll see as I drive this thing, it just really runs really strong, really quick. And it's just a really nice car. Okay, now one thing I'd like to point out that I'm doing is, as you saw before, I started the car up for you. It was ice cold. All right, that's good. Now I'm gonna start it up again for you because it's nice and warmed up. You always wanna do this when you're buying an older, higher mileage car, well actually any car for that matter, you wanna start them cold and warm. You don't wanna like show up at the dealership and the guy has the car all warmed up for you, unless it's a brand new car, then that's fine. Uh, but yeah, it, you wanna see them start warm and cold because different engine temperatures can have different effects mechanically on the car. But anyways, you'll see, no problem started up the car is so quiet too all right here we go now we'll take it for a ride four speed automatic transmission i guess it's got the v8 front wheel drive engine set up and here we go That's how strong this car is. We're at 60 miles an hour already. I mean, that's pretty damn impressive for any car, let alone a 15 year old Cadillac. This car gets up and moves. I never really paid attention to the gas mileage. I can't comment on that, but from what I understand, for a V8, it actually gets pretty good gas mileage. And as you can see, look, hands off the wheel, go dead straight down the road. Absolutely no issues in the front end whatsoever. I'll test the brakes when we get on our way back. And you can see it's just a really quiet, what a ride too. I mean, like I said, it's really kind of a weird combination. It handles the bumps really nicely. It's quiet, it doesn't jar your spine, but yet you go flying around a corner, the car actually sticks to the road. It's kind of neat. All right, you know, if I get turned around in time, depending on the turning radius. Oop, oh, there's a big truck coming. I better wait. I don't know what's gonna take off, but I don't wanna do that. Do something really stupid and unsafe. Okay, here, I'll shut up and let you guys listen. Here we go. And there we are. Bam, 60 miles an hour again. Smooth, nice smooth shifts. I mean, this is just something else. I just remember there's only one other little thing. I think it might have a slight power steering fluid leak. I know I had to put the power steering fluid in it the other day, so I want to tell you about that as well. The brake test I'm going to do is just really simple. I'm going to pull into the vacant lot across the street from my place, 
let go of the steering wheel, slam on the brakes. The only visual thing you can see is keep your eye on the steering wheel. You don't want to see the wheel swing wildly to the right or the left. That tells you there's a problem. All right, I'm gonna pull in here. I know there's a little patch of loose gravel. I'll do this at about 20, 25 miles an hour. Hands off the wheel and, okay. Good news, as I suspected, because the vehicle does have traction control, it also does have anti-lock brakes and it works. Because if you notice, the wheel did the little jiggle when I was on the gravel. That's the anti-lock brake pump working, sending you know power to the right, to the left, front, rear, that sort of thing. So I really want to, you know, I, I just think that's one of the best safety features going in a vehicle. This does have the dual airbags, of course, but you know you do want to be, you know, if you can have both, it's better. Anti-lock brakes and the dual airbags. All right, so let's do a uh, little recap here. This is a low mileage, 1999. Cadillac Seville STS. Uh, it's only got 117,285 miles on it. All right. And like I said, I've put probably almost 250 miles on it myself, and it's just a great running car. Do want to remind you that it does, like I said, if you let it idle for too long or whatever, it, the temperature will go up a little bit. Like I said, I've never had it overheat on me, so I don't know what the deal is with that. I mean, it could be anything from a clogged radiator to a blown head gasket or something. The only reason I don't think blown head gas because it doesn't blow any smoke out of the back and the oil and water is not mixing. So I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, that's the deal on this car. And like I said before, we'll take a, um, a walk around it, you know, out while it's nice and bright out. Now the sun's not out, so it's actually even better. You don't want it to be too bright. So here we go. Let me, sorry about that. I'll take the camera off here. All righty. And then let's go and check out the, how beautiful this car looks. Yeah, it's even a nice color. I mean, I kind of like the car a lot better in red or black, but this, if you're gonna have white, this is the white you want. The nice chrome wheels. It's even got the uh, thin white striped tires on it, which by the way, aren't cheap. Just a really good looking car. All right, folks, there you have it. You wanna get yourself a great handling, quick, great looking luxury sports sedan, maybe you wanna call it, I don't know, um, for very little money. And this one is the one for you. It's a beautiful car. Thanks.